He said, I am that I am. So if you're here this morning and whatever your need is, God is an awesome God, able to meet every need. So good to have everyone here today. Good to see W.A. West back with us. Been out for a while. We've been praying for you. Good to see you and others that have maybe been sick. We are fighting the enemy in the last days. But we're overcoming. Amen. Look in your Bible, Judges chapter 16 this morning, I believe it is. Judges 16, verses 21 and 22. And all of us know the story of Samson. How that Samson had a prophetic birth. A miraculous life. And how that he got off track in his divine call of God and fell in love with the very thing he was born and birthed to destroy. And because he did, he played with his anointing. And he lost out his relationship with God. And he found himself imprisoned and blinded and grinding in the mill. In verse 21, but the Philistines took him and they put out his eyes and they brought him to Gaza and bound him with feathers of brass and did grind he did grind in the prison house now listen to verse 22 how be it the hair of his head began to grow again after it was shaven I want a little thought this morning lessons you can learn from your enemies and I thought about 9-1-1 20 years ago. We examined what these crazy hijackers did. And we learned some things from them that will help us, better help us to fight our brother battle. I believe we can learn from the Philistines this morning. And I know that there's been many sermons preached from the viewpoint of Samson. But today I want to preach from the viewpoint of the Philistines and show you their mistakes because I believe the church is walking down that same road and making the same mistakes. We need to learn these lessons. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, this morning, would you pour your spirit out and minister to your people in a special way? God, this is a, a, an, an uncertain time. It's a time, God, that we've never seen before. And we need a touch, a genuine touch of God. When we enter the house of God, we must find you, Lord. You said if we seek your face, we would find you. Call on you, and you would answer. This morning, oh God, would you meet every need in this place. And God, every one that's crying out for help, let that help be here. And let every person receive a touch of our God. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody shouts. One more time. So I want to preach this message from a different viewpoint. Instead of viewing through the eyes of Samson, I want us to view this story through the eyes of the Philistines. The Philistines made the same mistakes that the church is making today. They got careless with their enemy and it cost them their lives. They conquered Samson. They captured Samson. They imprisoned Samson. They have control of Samson. They cut off Samson's power source. They did everything but one thing. They did not kill Samson. Now, I got to help you right here because there's some stuff that you got to kill if you're going to have victory. Can I get a witness out there? You need to know there are some things in your life that you must kill. You cannot let them live if you're to be victorious. You can't wound them. You got to kill them. You can't imprison them. You got to kill them. You can't rehabilitate them. You got to kill them. You can't counsel or meditate, medicate them. You cannot play with some things. You have got to kill these things and remove them out of your life. Because if you don't, they will rise back up and kill you. Learn the lesson of Saul. He was commanded by God to kill all of the Amalekites. You say, Pastor, that was a harsh thing to say. God knew what he was doing. He said, don't let any of them live. their animals, their stock, uh, livestock. Kill everything. And so Saul came back and he said, I have obeyed God. You know, a lot of times we think we've obeyed God when we miss God. 
And, and the prophet said, I hear some sheep uh, uh, bleeding out there. What's going on? He said, well, I thought I would save some good stuff. I thought I'd save some stuff that looked good. And, and the Bible says that the prophet said, it, it, it's better to be obedient then give sacrifice. Years later, Saul and his son are in a battlefield. and He's wounded and falls on his sword, but he cannot get the sword to go through. So he asked a man that comes by, can you push my sword inside me so that I can die? Kill me. And the man began to do that. And, the, and then Saul said, before you do this, who are you? The guy didn't say, I'm John Smith. I'm Ted Jones. He said, I am a much Amalekite. I'm the very generation of people that God told you to kill. What you don't kill will rise back up and kill you. Somebody shout, kill it. We're living in a compromising era, but we need to kill it. Somebody say, man, we don't need to see a sight of it anymore. Philistines let Samson live. Judges 16, 22, Samson's hair began to grow back. Now, what I don't understand is the Philistines knew the secret of Samson's strength. His power, his covenant was in his hair. They found that out when Delilah tricked Samson and cut all his hair off. And so they had rushed in and shook himself. He shook himself as other times, but he became an ordinary man. In other words, I want you to get this now. His hair, his covenant, his separation was his covenant with God. So the church today has a covenant with God, and our separation is our covenant. That's the reason we can't be, act, and talk like the world. And when we break that covenant, I want to tell you, you lose your power, and we become just another church building. I got to say something right here this morning. We need power back in the church. Oh, help me over here. We need fire back in the church. Any fire over here. We need anointing in the church. Any anointing in here. We need the glory to fall in the church. Anybody got any glory? We don't need to come to church like a funeral home crowd and be entertained for 15 minutes and go, home. somebody ought to feel the explosive power of the Son of God. Amen. Amen. And so... They knew that Samson's power was in his covenant. They knew that our power is in our separation. Now, here's what I don't understand. If I am a Philistine, and we have conquered Samson, and his power's in his hair, I'm going to give him a haircut every week, whether he need it or not. Oh, somebody say amen. Because if that dude gets his hair back, we in trouble. So I'm going to keep his head shaved. Uh-oh, I'm preaching now. I'm not going to let it rise back up in my life. Anybody hearing me? I'm going to keep it to bay. And I believe this. Now, I can't prove it by Scripture. But I believe for a while, every day they shaved his head away. Every day they went and lathered him up and said, what are you going to do today? I didn't grow any hair last night. But they shaved his head every day. But all of a sudden, after a while, somebody say, after a while, they got used to his hair growing back. They got used to what they had shaved off, and now they didn't uh, see it as serious. They're not, no longer taking it serious. And I say to the church, we've got used to some stuff that's coming back on the horizon that we had to put under our feet years ago. Somebody say amen. If it was wrong 20 years ago, it's wrong today. But we don't notice it's that bad. Let me help you right here. It ain't bad now that your children are living together and sleeping together without marriage. It ain't all that bad. It ain't all that bad that your kids are experimenting with homosexuality. It ain't all that bad that your kids are having a sociable drink. We're being desensitized. We don't see the seriousness of what the devil's trying to do. The message here, here is don't get careless. Everything the Philistines have forgot, how powerful and how dangerous Samson was. I mean, he could kill a thousand men in one time. I want to tell you something, folks. Sin is nothing to play with. 
Sin has messed up better people than you and me. Stronger people than you and me. There's been folk that used to serve the Lord but allowed sin in their life. And now they're backslid on God. I want to tell you, it's dangerous to give sin place in your life. Now, now they thought that they had Samson under control. That's it. I can handle it. Say that with me. I can handle it. I drink people not coming back to church, folk. They can handle it. See, the world is still bad. The world is still crazy. There's still some of the most foolish stuff happening, most wicked stuff in the world. You know what the church is saying? I can handle it. I know they're teaching homosexuality in the school. I can handle it. I know they're showing uh, pornography on TV. I can handle it. Our, our family will be all right. We've got it under control. Never underestimate the power of your opponent. So they laughed and they mocked Samson and they ridiculed him and they made fun of him and, and they said, you know, we're not worried about you anymore. And at first they were very cautious and careful, and, but now they're careless and carnal. After a while they lost their fear, the respect of sin. They lost their fear of Samson. And church... We need to understand sin is still sin. It's deadly. It's dangerous. It's ungodly. And it can pull your family apart. It can tear your marriage up. It can put your body in the hospital. It can damn your soul to hell. Sin is serious. Somebody needs to get back in the pulpit and call sin, sin, and righteous, righteous. Oh, come on now. You don't live like the world and, and, and do anything you want to do and still go to heaven. Somebody wake up out there. Never lose sight of the danger of these things. Although Samson was blind, the Philistines became blind. One day, they were having a celebration, and they had defeated Samson. Now, notice something. What was their enemy was now going to become their entertainment. They're now playing with it. Listen to what they did. Soldiers in the mighty army of the king could not handle Samson. Warriors shook when they heard his name. No one was uh, able to stand before Sam. But now, because they felt like they could handle it, and they felt they become desensitized with what's going on. It doesn't touch them anymore. They don't send soldiers to go get Samson. They send a little child to go get him by the hand. Uh oh, I got to preach right here. Because we're putting our enemies in the hands of our children. Samson who once killed a thousand. The Philistines are no longer afraid of it. We're, we're, we're no longer uh, afraid of sin. We're no longer sensitized or sensitive to sin. We now uh, make entertainment of it. Uh, the thing that used to be our enemy is now going to be entertainment even for our children. We are entertained by sin right in the church. We're making the same mistake that the Philistines did. We have become desensitized. Let me just wake some folk up. Can I shock some of you? I said living together is still sin. Having sex without marriage is still sin. Somebody say amen. You need to teach your young people that. Homosexuality is still wrong. Don't you tell your kids it's an alternate lifestyle. It's a damnable lifestyle. And you got to get them out of that mess. Pornography is still sin. I know they can get on their telephone and look at anything they want to look at. But I'm telling you it's still sin. We're desensitized. You know, you know how I know we're desensitized? We let our kids have computers and they got a password we can't get in. Why do you think? They want to keep you out of there. Well, it's their business. You know, when I was growing up, my mom and dad told me it's their business as long as I put my feet under their table. <laughs> you need to quit copping out. We've been desensitized with it. Desensitized. Uh, let me just show you. Young man comes to pick our little girls up. He's got 15 earrings in his nose. Ears. Chin. Mouth, 
tattoos all over his body. And pants hanging down his backside. And we say, come and get her. Desensitize. What you ought to do is snatch him up in the collar. You say, who are you to think you can date my daughter? Who are you to think you can come in here after my child? You will not be able to. She is not going out with you. You hit the road, Jack. That's, that's when you, you got, oh, but it will embarrass my children. We need to stop letting our kids have their own way and be sensitive to what hell is trying to do. Because if we don't do something, the devil's going to bring the whole house down. The Philistine said, told the little boy, go get Samson. He's not, he's not a threat. He's not a danger. Don't worry about him. Just put him wherever he wants to go. The little boy, Samson, says, hey, son, put my hands on the pillow. Now, two things are happening. Number one, the, the parents are insensitive to what the kids are doing. And the kids are become slaves to the sin of the world. And so he puts his hands on the pillows. See, see so our, our children are, are, are being enslaved by the powers of it. So now we smoke, our kids smoke marijuana. And they uh, 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 move in together. And they experiment with homosexuality. And they take guns to schools and shoot one another. Come on now. Moms and dads are desensitized. And the kids have become uh, slaves. And now we, we, we see nothing wrong with our kids wearing nothing. Boy, it's getting quiet in here. At the beach, they don't wear enough for a Band-Aid to cover up. And it's all right. Uh, uh, man. And then they put on with enough makeup that they look like they're walking the street somewhere in New York somewhere. We don't teach them how to dress. We're desensitized. And then parents are getting on Facebook and befriending people and, and talking to people they got no business talking to. We're being entertained by the powers of hell. The number one separation for marriage today is because someone met someone on the Facebook and now they're dating them. There's some people you can't be friend because they're not a friend, they're a devil. They're a wolf in sheep's clothing. I've heard incidents in this church. Fasten your seatbelt. In this church where I preach like I where we let our boyfriends, the boyfriends come over and stay with the daughters in the same house. At night. I've heard of that. And, and, and we see nothing wrong with it. What are you saying? I'm saying if we don't do something, that the enemy's going to get a hold of the pillars of our life and crash in. Satan wants to push down the pillars of Christian. First of all, he wants to push down our relationship with God. You know, things like prayer, Bible reading. Coming to church now has really become something that we just don't see any need for. Can I get mean right here? I feel a mean streak. Look over Facebook sometime and I see some people talk about prayer and talk about praying and talk about I trust God and I love the Lord and they ain't been to church in two years. I don't, I got a problem with that. I don't understand that. You said, Pastor, if they're just afraid to come. Do you know what? Can I help you right here? Church is not the only place you can get COVID. You can get it at the beach. You can get it in the mountains. You can get it in the Walmart. You can get it on the street corner. Church is not the only place you get COVID. The devil is trying to push down our pillars. He wants to turn a second pillar is he's trying to tear down our non-relationship with sin. He's wanting us to embrace sin. He's wanting us to accept sin. He's wanting us to lower our moral standards, the right and the wrong. Satan knows if he can push these two pillars down, he can destroy the whole family. That's the reason families are in the shape they're in. He's, been, he's tearing down the whole family, the marriage, the children. All the devil has to do is get his hands on these two pillars. We've got to rise back up. We're learning lessons from the Philistines. 
we got to rise back up and take control. And realize that what is a potential power, and we've got to keep it underfoot. See, see, we have got to understand that as Samson's hair grew back, and he made it to the pillars, that he killed more in his death than he did in his life. You know what it says? He was stronger at the end than he was at the beginning. Oh, I hate to say this, but it's the truth. Because stuff will have a stronger hold on you in the latter end than it did in the beginning. Stuff you thought you could handle years ago, you're not going to be able to handle it. It'll rise up stronger. Let me read this and I'm going to close. 1 Peter 2.20 For after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ, if they're again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse than the beginning. You'll be colder, harder, more, more rebellious. You will lose your sensitivity for God. You, can, can I share this with you? That's the reason people can come in church. Doesn't matter what's preached, it doesn't touch them. Doesn't matter who sings. Doesn't matter if our local singers or we paid the best singers in the land to come. We've had the best. We've had, we've had uh, Jason Crabb here, one of the best. We've had Michael English here, one of the best. We've had numbers of great preachers to come here. But when you allow stuff in your life, you build a shell over your heart, and you are desensitized to what's right or wrong. And now, here we are. On the verge of destruction, so to speak. On the verge of the coming of the Lord. On the verge of this world as we know it coming to an end. And we're sitting here crossing our arms and legs every Sunday playing church. Thinking everything's all right. Get this picture as I close. The Philistines are sitting up in the stands. They're eating popcorn and drinking cocoa. They got a hot dog in one hand and a box of popcorn in the other. And they're saying, look, look at that. Look, look at that. That thing thought he could do it. Look at him. We've conquered him. We've defeated him. And while they're laughing, and while they're at ease, and while they feel safe, uh-oh, while they feel like they got it together, that they can handle it. Samson got his hands on the pillars of the building and said, oh God, remember me one more time and took that whole building down. I close by saying this. What are you saying, preacher? I believe that if we're not careful, the enemy has got his hands on the pillows of our families, of our churches, of our marriages, of our homes. And we're sitting back being entertained by it. We laugh at things. It's, it's funny now. It's not dangerous, Paul. It's funny. It, it, it's entertaining. And I thought to myself, the devil's just trying to get his hands on the pillows. <laughs>